Hi, my name is Sean Walker and I'm a Principal Emerging Practices Architect and part of the Ranger team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Microsoft License Reservations. Please note that this video is not intended to provide any guidance on how and when to use these specific Microsoft licenses. It's only intended to be an instructional video on how to configure these types of entitlements in your instance. So you still must adhere to the specific licensing use rights and contract terms agreed upon by your organization. So what are license reservations? License reservations let customers get started right away with online services without having to go through that standard procurement process. Um, the NetS is depending on whether you what type of agreement you have on whether you can actually do reservations and I encourage you to go and take a look at the QR code that's posted here um, about the volume licensing and more about the license reservations. Um, so license reservations do have some restrictions and those are only online services are eligible for license reservation orders. Uh, reservation orders are definitely a financial obligation um, that's realized during that annual true up process. And that's going to be based off of the reservation date and the quantity of licenses being reserved. You can't place any reservations um, for anything that's six months or, or greater in the future, um, but you can cancel reservations for up to 72 hours before that start of the usage date. Reservations can't be made if that enrollment is expired or is going to be expiring within the last 30 days um, of the agreement of the anniversary date. I'm now going to jump into a Yokohama release of ServiceNow and show you how to create a license reservation entitlement. So I've logged into a Yokohama version of ServiceNow and I'm on the Software Asset Management Workspace. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go take a look at our Microsoft 365 compliance position. So we're going to come into the license usage and we're going to come down into the Microsoft card and we can see here underneath Microsoft 365 our E3 and it's showing as compliant. We have 10 licenses owned and 10 licenses required so that's great. But our organization is about to hire new employees. So we're going to be hiring another 10 employees. So our anniversary date isn't for um, another year. We just passed our anniversary date. So what do we do here? How do we go ahead and, and get licenses for these people? What we can do is we can go ahead into the 365 portal and create a purchase or a license reservation for those extra entitlements. And once that's done, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure we put those res that reservation order into our system so that we can track the future consumption and know that we're still compliant. So we can see here that we've got one entitlement associated with these uh, with this particular software model. So that's the Microsoft 365 E3 entitlement for those 10 rights. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually open up that entitlement so you can get to that entitlement here or you can go through the license operations and go to your entitlement that way and we can click it on it and then what we can do here is you'll notice that since this particular entitlement is a subscription based license so again that online services agreement right then we can do a reservation for and it's got to be a user subscription so as long as it's a online service so a subscription with a license metric of user subscription you're going to be able to see this create reserve entitlement button available for you. So we can go ahead and we'll just take a look here. Just a couple of things we'll show you here is we've got our start date of our agreement was 2023, March 1st, and our end date is March 1st, 2027. So again, we're a little ways away from um, from we just passed our anniversary date. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to have to create a reservation. It's going to create it for, for basically almost the full year till our next true up. So we click on reserve entitlement and you notice it's not the standard entitlement creation form. So this allows you to pick when you put your start date for the reservation in place. And we can say we're going to put it in. We're all going to be onboarded on Monday. So we click on this on the 31st. Our end date is again the 2026. Um, that's our next true update. 
So that's what it's automatically calculating that 2026, the March 1st is our true update. And we can tell them how many reservations we created. So we created a reservation for 10 more because we're hiring 10 more people. It brought over the unit cost from the actual entitlement and it automatically associated the software model and the source entitlement. So it's gonna link it to that source entitlement and it's actually gonna create that particular entitlement. So you can actually uh, attach any kind of documentation you have from your reserve order. And then once that's done, you hit your submit button. And from here, we can go ahead and we can click view details and it's gonna bring us into that entitlement record. And we can see here the status is on order because um, it's not going into effect till the 31st. Uh, we can see it copied over all the information from that existing entitlement, but you see here it's a reserve entitlement. And what it's also going to do, um, and see, sorry, here's the the, perch, the start date and here's that end date. And we just hit save. We can come back into um, our license operations, into our entitlement. We can just do a refresh here and we can see here, here is our um, our reserve entitlement here. So what's gonna happen now is the system's gonna add those as of Monday, right? Active rights is zero because it doesn't take in effect until Monday. Um, it's gonna actually include, add those active rights to the other active rights once this goes into effect. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the date on the order date and say we ordered it yesterday, just to show you what happens to those available and Right, so I can just do a refresh here, and now we can see there's 10 rights active here, 10 rights um, purchased, so for a total of 20. So now what I can do is I can rerun the reconciliation and show you what it looks like in the uh, license usage. Okay, so the reconciliation's finished, so let's take a look at what the license usage looks like now. So we come down into 365, go to our E3, it's still compliant because those people haven't started yet, but we can see we now own 20 entitlements and that's because of our two entitlements here the one reservation and the one um, regular uh, entitlement so what's going to happen to the license reservation is once it expires so it's going to expire on our anniversary date and what we're going to do at our anniversary date is we are going to true up and then what we'll do is we will have that true up order that goes in on our anniversary date and we will process and bring in those entitlements because we're probably going to be end up buying more than just the E3. We'd probably true up other licenses as well. So we want to process that true up order just like we would process any other entitlement purchase. So for more information on this subject, you can go to the ServiceNow documentation website and look for create reserve entitlements for Microsoft Online Services, or you can just scan the QR code and it'll take you right there. I also highly recommend taking a look at the Microsoft Licensing website and also the Volume Licensing site where the manage reservations for volume licensing. You can scan those QR codes and it'll take you there. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one.